These stunts you're about to see are dangerous. They were done by trained professionals in secure environments. Don't attempt any of these stunts, any place, anywhere, or at any time. Welcome to Dying Extreme, the show that gives you a look into extreme lifestyles. Hang on to your seats and prepare to go for the ride of a lifetime. Iron Extreme is an exciting new show full of action pack, edge of your seat excitement from start to finish. And it's hosted by Jim Duffner. Iron Extreme is a show that has people spinning their wheels and doing backflips to watch. Welcome to Iron Extreme. My name's Jim Duffner and I'm going to be your host for the next 30 minutes. Iron Extreme is an exciting new show that takes you behind the scenes, up close and personal, into the lifestyles of the extreme. Today we've got an exciting show for you. We're going to head out and see if we can't hook up with Trigger Gum, who holds the world's record for jumping a motorcycle over 270 feet in the air. I don't know if they should call it jumping or flying. But first, we're gonna hook up with a couple crazy BMXers. So hang on to your seats and prepare to go for the ride of a lifetime with Eye and Extreme, the show that keeps its eye on the extreme. Hi, my name's Lauren Laverne, and this here is my lovely lady, Heather Malone. She loves to watch me ride. She uh, supports me at everything I do, skateboarding, riding, surfing, snowboarding, whatever. It's all fun, and she's always there for all of them, so can't forget about the lady. I love her. And uh, for all you other ladies out there, you wish. Where were you born and raised at? I was born and raised in Orange County, California, specifically born in Anaheim, and then I moved to Orange, and then Tustin, First Street, I don't know, I've been everywhere, just uh, always riding though. How long have you been a pro for? i um, been competing pro for about a year and a half to two years since, I think it was 2000. It was 2000, I won the amateur, first place, King of Dirt, I got first place, and uh, it was it was a it was a big step up from riding with a bunch of little guys and then like stepping up to the pro class and you got all the guys you looked up to your whole life and you're riding against them you know on the rolling and you're like scared but you're not at the same time and you're just ready to like take a crash or like pull it perfect for all these guys that are going to be stoked on you you know but uh pretty much I've been pro for almost like 2 years you could say and it's been like a great, great learning experience for me. I've traveled like half the country with a guy named Dan Hubbard, stunt team, so that guy backs me up super hard. And uh, bar spinner with Team Soil, and uh, let's say my mom. My mom backed me up since I was a little guy, and you know, God, God's up there watching out for all of us. And uh, just all the people that have ever helped me out, my friends, family, everything. I mean, that's what keeps me going. So where are we today? Once again, we are at the man, the myth, the legend, Ben Snowden's house. Come on over, Ben, check it out. Rick Thorne has just bought the Ben Snowden pad. And uh, that's after he put about 10 grand worth of labor into this place. New wood, new finish, everything. How you doing? My name's Ben Snowden, and this is my backyard. It recently went under new ownership by pro BMX rider Rick Thorne. So it's now known as Studio 333 give you a brief tour. The last few months this has gone under a complete overhaul. Uh, this place started being built by Steve McLeod about four years ago and recently, about a year ago, I moved in and Rick helped fund a lot of the, the overhaul, getting a lot of the ramps going again. So we'll go on a little tour. Here we go. This is known as the uh, street course area. This is the street course area, and this is what we call a street spine. Reason being is because there's no little metal coping on top, it's just a piece of wood, so we call it a street spine or a deck spine. Has two jumps on each side of it, back to back. 
It's great for going up, straight up in the air, and straight back down, not very far. As we continue around the street course area, this is the back side of our half pipe. We have two different sub boxes and a wall ride. Transfer, transfers into a roll-in. And also, there's the takeoff for our foam pit. This is our backyard foam pit. It's a little bit different than most foam pits because foam is very expensive. So we substitute with couch cushions. But here's the normal foam that most foam pits have. It gets very dusty. So it's nice to have a little bit of covering on the foam. Thanks to your neighbors. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we get various people who donate the couch cushions. So you saw the foam pit, but to get speed for the foam pit, we have an eight foot quarter pipe. It's great for doing big airs and for jumping onto the roof. Lauren, how you doing? Tell me about the foam pit. All right, uh, the foam pit's full of mattresses, couch cushions, rats, snakes, I don't, I mean. <laughs> so this is different than most foam pits. Well, the one at Real Ride has rats and snakes in it too, but uh, no way do you have a 10 foot wide lip. I mean, 20 foot wide, would you say? 16. I'm not a big fan of the foam pit because uh, people are kind of like, they get like a weird image if you like ride foam pits, you know, and like they say, like, oh, you're not that is that good because you ride a foam pit, but you know, that's why we keep it in that corner over there on the side of the off you can't see it, you know. Who, so, yeah. who do you think are some of the people that you've uh, ridden with or done shows with who don't like foam pits? Oh, uh, man, there's a bunch of guys that love the foam pits in the show. And and what, what about the guys who don't like foam pits? Um, Anyone in particular come to mind? Um, I don't know. Any iron monkeys? I don't know any iron monkeys. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about this foam pit. What makes it different than most average foam pits? Um, most average foam pits are just a lip and a square and a pull of foam. And you know, this one ha actually has a landing on the other side and then a resi. You could launch off the resi over the train tracks if you really want to. T tell me about where you think I got most of the foam for my foam pit. Um, Probably your neighbor's couches and uh, I don't know the alley or something. How, how does how do you smell when you when you're done jumping in it? Um, you smell like a sponge, you know, like a wet sponge, you know, that dirty smell. Ew. How how about maybe does uh, the covering on the couch cushions help keep the dust down a little bit? Oh yeah, I love it when you get cakes full of dust in your eyes and you're trying to do foam pit tricks like back to tail ups and then you get like foam in your eyes like I can't even explain. So then what do you think you should do after you learn a trick in the foam pit? What, what do you do next? Um, we have an air blower down here so when you get out of the foam pit you can spray everybody off you know so it makes it a lot easier. After you learn a trick in the foam pit where do you try your trick next? We take it straight to the box jump right down here. Tell me about the black rubber that you have on your ramps. This is a special astronomically designed air, space, rubber. It's highly sophisticated because when you land and you're not landing quite properly, you'll tend to slide down this thing instead of like getting stuck and caught up in your bike and getting really hurt. Actually, this is the rubber that they use in the back of dump trucks, but <laughs> we figured out it works good to land on. It's uh, give you a nice smooth surface. That way, if you're gonna crash, you can just slide out of it. Makes, makes it a little bit safer area to learn tricks. We call it the resi pad. To be the best, you gotta have like proper equipment to train on, and this is probably it right here. So instead of one big impact, it helps spread out your impact, and you kind of slide out of your crash instead of, uh, well actually you had a pretty good, a couple good bloopers there earlier. Yeah, well I did a tail whip, and my foot got stuck underneath my frame, and like, I got a dead leg still, and if 
the resi wasn't there, I probably would have broke my leg or something, but I just slid across the thing as if it was ice and, you know, everything's okay and we're still going, man. Okay, here we are at top of the 11 foot half pipe in the backyard. And we have the same resi surface on the side of the vert ramp, so you can jump off the vert ramp, do all the tricks you want to try, and land over here. Whee! On the smooth surface. There you have it. I thought I said I was gonna not try that anymore. Damn. That was gross. Disgusting. Ew. Have you ever been hurt? I was tail webbing a six foot box for a bar spinner with Team Soil, and I got this big gouge on top of my eye. I was knocked out for like 12 hours. That was probably the worst crash ever. But uh, mainly you get like rolled ankles monkey elbows and I don't know. Have you ever met someone who started riding bikes and then got injured and then quit riding because of the injury? Um, there's too many of them. There's a lot, huh? <laughs> yeah. A lot of people when you first start riding, the hardest time to learn stuff is right at the beginning when you're learning the basic fundamentals. So that's when it's real important to stick with it. Of course you get a lot of cuts, bruises, elbows. Elbows take a good beating. Down here, the shin pads. Uh, we wear shin pads to help protect our legs, but you still get a lot of scars on the legs. And that's a lot of the injuries that we suffer, just a lot of bumps, bruises, nicks, stings. And then uh, I've been knocked out a few times, had a ruptured spleen, but nothing major. The longest I've ever been off my bike is two weeks with a sprained knee and ankle. All right. These shin guards are dedicated by Nasty. These are what I use to protect my shins. Uh, these are my gloves here. I got these gloves from my homie Dan Hubbard, uh, the man, the myth, the legend. Everybody knows him. These are prime protective gear. I mean, I'm kind of sponsored by these companies, but they just like send me stuff occasionally. I don't really like keep up with that. This here's my special wristband for my messed up wrist. Kind of riding on a sprained wrist, broken. I don't know, fractured, maybe something. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. All right, in here, check it out. I got my pegs. I normally ride with these things, but today I figured I'd just keep them off my bike. Adds a little bit of weight, you know. But I'm a technical rider as well, but right now the tech is in the backpack. Tell me about your bike. Uh, this here is a Ben Snowden classic frame made by GT Bicycles. Uh, GT happens to be a guy named Gary Turner that I recently rode for actually but with his company called Axis Bikes and painted my bike blue because that's my favorite color and I uh, got the anodized blue bars and uh, my, pretty much these bikes can take a beating like you can pretty much fall from any height in the air and these things are going to be still together at, when you get up you know. It's like these wheels are triple wall wheels, you got strong wheels, they're like reinforced with all these crazy weldings and stuff, I don't really know too much about them, that's for the manufacturers, but I mean pretty much what makes me keep on going is 4130 Pro Molly coming to your town. Basically like what a pro's bike looks like, they're all sh different shapes, sizes and colors, I mean it's a good bike. Ben's got the same color, I think he copied me. I got it pretty good. That was a good angle, I like where you're shooting from. Hey, <laughs> how you doing?
see you at 8 o'clock in the morning. I gotta start my 360 telps in the foam pit. Unlike Ben, because he just does them on the box, you know, but check it out. Take two. Disaster. Eight foot quarter part. I'm sweating really bad. So we're sitting in my backyard. This is Heather. It's Lauren's girlfriend. What do you think about Lauren and his BMX bike? I think it's awesome. I think God blessed him with a great talent, and he's a natural. Do you think he can do a backflip? He can do backflip.
Thank Lauren Laverne for coming over and riding with me. Good riding today. And uh, just wanted to show you one more thing before we go. This is our big cactus. We've been growing it for about 20 years. Actually, I don't know how long it's been here, but it's a big cactus. Lauren, what do you think about my cactus? Um, I think it makes, it puts a real effect on the backyard. It makes it just go higher on the quarter pipes and the boxes and everything because it's just a really nice cactus. Do you think you could jump off this ramp and land in the cactus for us? Um, yeah, I actually could. Well, that'd be good, but I think that's all the time we got. Thanks for coming to ride in my backyard. Good session. Spence Snow and signing off. My backyard. See you next time. Hey, 8 o'clock in the morning. Who gets up at 8 o'clock in the morning? I can't even get up and get a cup of coffee at 8 o'clock in the morning. And those guys are out there riding bicycles. They're nuts. The only cat, if I did that, I'd end up in a plastic bag, you know what I mean? The only kind of exercise I like at that hour is sleeping with my head on the pillow. That's what I like to do. Anyway, I like riding bikes with this crank in my wrist. It's time to go to the eye in the sky and see if we can't get a hold of the trigger. Let's go. The good news is we caught up with Trigger. The bad news is we're out of time for this show, so we're going to have to have him on the next show. So until then, remember, Ein Extreme is the show that keeps its eye on the extreme. <laughs> <laughs>